Hey, I'm Kevin with Robot in 3 Days Team Redux, and we're going to be going over a uh, passive uh, claw mechanism that will be able to take cones from multiple orientations and then put it into a single orientation. This is going to be the first time that we're actually testing it with the uh, scoring areas. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. We had this as a prototype uh, and we've made a few improvements to it. So we have uh, reduced the size of these paddles that rotate freely uh, on here. And then we have these uh, grip uh, sections here that are just available from like Home Depot. It's just uh, uh, stuff that you put inside of your drawers uh, to keep things from moving around. So it's this rubberized stuff that's able to uh, have more friction. And uh, then it's really cheap. You can just get it uh, from your local hardware store uh, and you can just cover up whatever surfaces you want to be able to add more friction to it if you're trying to grip onto your game pieces. Um, for this design, we have it, uh, a, a piston will be closing and then crushing the game elements. Uh, and we have these free spinning so that if you grab the cone, uh, whenever it is on the ground, it'll be able to lift it and uh, put it into the correct orientation. And then this is the first time we're actually be trying to put it onto any of the uh, uh, scoring areas. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and demonstrate it. So yeah, it flips it into one orientation. And then you're also able to grab them whenever they are normally upright as well. And then we can go ahead and just show that it's uh, easy for it to actually rotate now. And it just rotates around and it uses the uh, higher uh, gravity on the bottom for it to rotate so that it is in the correct orientation. So some things that uh, is, are interesting about this is we have these churros as extensions here. Uh, we ran into problems with uh, the bearings here. We had the bearings originally in the uh, two by one here and it was actually binding up because this is a big lever arm and whenever it was compressing with all the force, it was uh, binding these bearings together and then it wouldn't rotate anymore. So what we ended up doing was actually put the bearings inside of these paddles so that they're able to rotate much freer uh, and you don't have all of the force on a big lever arm. You have the force being applied right there and it's a lot easier for it to rotate uh, and it can actually rotate nice and freely. Uh, we also are using these Ega slides uh, right there. Um, and you might actually have these uh, already in your shop. Uh, a lot of the times it's included in the kickoff kit. Uh, there are like Aegis um, uh, kit of parts uh, that are sent off to all of the teams. Um, and there are a uh, nice linear slide available for you that you might already have in your shop. And then we also have this uh, piston here from Bimba, uh, and we have included a couple of these needle valves on the end uh, that we got from Andymark. And uh, that allows you to have a slow rate of uh, airflow into this piston, so it doesn't shake the whole thing apart. So uh, it still allows you to have all the force of the pneumatic pressure behind uh, in the cylinder, but it doesn't have the same, like, punch to it. Uh, so the impulse is a lot lower and your mechanism is more likely to stay uh, together because whenever you have it just fully 60 PSI shooting back and forth, you end up with these weights on the end. It sort of like moves around quite a bit. Um, and slowing it down just allows you to have a little bit more um, reliability in your mechanisms because it's not just slamming itself back and forth. Uh, it ends up actually slowly going out, but it still has all the force of the uh, cylinder behind it. Um, some other interesting things. Um, with the um, piston here, we have it mounted not uh, rigidly. So as, uh, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect it here. 
you so, want to turn the valve again? Hmm? Uh, so as uh, this closes, you might be able to see that this piston actually changes angle ever so slightly. So if you had the piston mounted rigidly, you'd have to have it perfectly uh, parallel to this rail uh, in all dimensions. Uh, and that's pretty hard to do, especially with two by fours and such. Uh, like it, as you bolt it on, you actually see the metal flex uh, for, for these kind of prototypes. Um, so we have it so that it can actually rotate with a bunch of different degrees of freedom on each end. And um, you want to put that down and then we can show them this one. So on each end, we have on this side, we have a nice ball that's able to rotate in a bunch of different uh, degrees of freedom. And then on that side, we just have a single pivot. So it's able to, as it extends, be able to move around and through the stroke, it can change position without binding. So if you have them rigidly affixed uh, with a rail, you have to have them perfectly uh, together in tight tolerances. Otherwise, your rail is going to bind uh, or you're going to bend your piston. Um, something else that I definitely recommend is using linear rails anytime that you're using a pneumatics to have a linear actuation. Because if you don't have that linear rail, you could end up uh, having your piston whenever it's extended. If it gets hit, then that piston rod can bend, and then you're out however much money you uh, spent on that piston. So one of the reasons why we actually have these churros on here from Andy Mark is that uh, we need to have it so that this uh, base of the cone can actually swing around. So if uh, we just had these two by ones all the way over here, you'd interfere with the uh, uh, base of the cone there, and then you wouldn't be able to actually get it to rotate. Uh, so having these churros allows you to actually have the rotation point in the center of the cone. Um, so we can go ahead and try that out. Oh. All right, a little bit further back. So then it rotates on over. So some other things that we are working on to improve uh, or thinking about to improve is using two separate pistons. So right now, uh, the effector is only just wider than the uh, cube. So what we're thinking about doing is we could have two separate pistons uh, on here, one pointing that direction, one pointing that direction, and then having both of these arms actually move instead of just the one move so that you can have them expand out further. And in the end, you can also have shorter pistons as well so that the whole mechanism can be more compact. So the, the, club, or the mechanism that we have is also able to uh, pick up these cubes as well. So uh, even with the smaller diameter uh, paddles that we have, it's still able to hold these nice and strong. Uh, it's pretty stable there. Um, and then uh, we can just let it go and then it should drop on out so that the game piece will be centered. Right now, it's pulling everything over to the side. Uh, and if you had both of the pistons uh, moving, then you would actually have all of the uh, things centered. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, this has been Robot in Three Days uh, with Redux. Uh, if you want to watch more, go ahead and check us out on the Fun Channel. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Thank you to all of our suppliers and sponsors for the Robot in 3 Days Redux and Kettering Bulldogs programs.